All righty. So today on the Speakeasy, we've got the returning champ, Chance Garten of the Interverse podcast. I've talked to Chance on my show three, maybe three times so far, three or four. This might be number four or five. Um, but it's it's great to have Chance on. His show is killing it. I'm a big fan. Always kind of introducing me to new people that are not in my regular echo chamber. Um, most recently was Owen Benjamin. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll probably get into a lot of that stuff. And this first 30 minutes is going to be uh, shared with the public. But for everyone else is chilling here on Rockfin. I've got more people in my chat than I'm used to, <laughs> used to. What up uh, to my people? Hello, yeah. Kaylee, Chance has J-Lo, his false peeps. reality check. Kabir, and I, I was just on. Um, I just talked to False Reality Check yesterday. It was sick. Um, but I, I still haven't said what I need to say, which is welcome, Chance. Thanks for being here, man. Oh yeah, well, welcome, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> right, always happy podcasters. to hang out with you, bro. Yeah, dude. Not a lot how, of podcasters how, who I've met in real life. Right, right. That it was like about a year ago. It was last summer that we hung out. Um, but uh, what's what's been new since, la- since then? I guess we've talked after that year ago get together. But how are things in uh, the chance world? Oh man, like you said, I think the podcast is killing it. Interverse is doing great. Uh got multiple shows going now i do marvel decodes i do uh vibrant which is the wednesday night show you've been on that and a n- yeah. new thing for me i guess a lot is new since i was on your actual channel <laughs> probably like a ton of shit i've been doing audiobook narrations which are pretty sweet like you know lindsey Sharman, right yeah from rogue ways I uh, recently completed the audiobook narration of her novel, Sign Curve of Aeons. Ah, so you're you're the narrator for that? Yeah, narrated. Isn't that out? Because I've seen her, I've seen her um, posting about that. Is that out now? Yeah, you can get it on Audible right now. That's rad, man! Congrats on. Uh, I mean that that's that's just another. Um, skill that you acquire after so much podcasting you could narrate audiobooks so what do you think of i mean really awesome i guess i I want to read the books anyway yeah well i was gonna say i should be asking Lindsay this maybe but i'll just ask you like what did you what was your takeaway from the book what did you like about it i think you would dig it because it has a lot to do with the difference that we may have experienced with life on earth in a different astrological age, like radically different astrological age. Mm -hmm. So without giving too much away, the book takes place in the age of Leo. It was a long time ago. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So in terms of like sky clock symbolism, we're talking about a high civilization that's about to take a fall. Mm, Super interesting. Does it bring in the Sphinx at all? Because I know some people claim the Sphinx is like that old. There may be clues like that. That might be a clue that led me to realize what age it was <laughs> in the book. Yeah, yeah. Because nice. it doesn't come right out and say, you know, the people in the book, they don't know that the, they're fictional characters. So they're not talking about being in a age of history. But it's a cool story. It's like kind of, I don't know, um, ha- a Harry Potter-esque coming of age magic story, but a lot more mm-hmm. grounded in actual consciousness experiences and uh spirituality rather than like shooting lightning bolts out of a, a wand and shit like that so it's a cool yeah, book I, I recommend it well don't you have a didn't you go to school for writing yeah yeah i was a creative writing major it's yeah. funny that you bring that up actually because i was on it's not out yet but i was on emily moyer's podcast strange mosaic uh-huh And what she ended up wanting to talk to me about were things that she heard us talking about way back. I think maybe my first time on Cosmic Keys when we did that episode, Festivals in the Occult. Yeah, she commented on my YouTube channel that something about that episode. She was like, yeah, I'm about to interview Chance and I like this conversation. But that was like 2019 because I was in Chicago with Scarlett and we that was the first time we connected, I think. 2019 feels like a lifetime ago. Dude, I, I, I'm, I love it. I, I mean, I love 
um, the drama and the trauma, not the trauma. The, I love like the theater of what we've all had to collectively go through from then till now. And even when I just think about then, you know, I, I was, I knew I had had so many fewer of these conversations and just had so much less actual like experience and was just like, yeah, let's talk to anybody. Like, yeah, Scarlet, let's talk to these Wiccans. Like, yeah, let's just like do all of this stuff all the time. And now in the case of that stuff and in the case of astrology, um, I feel so disconnected from like those communities, you know, and there's like, there is like an aspect of it that's like, okay, there's like the alternative astrology or the alter alternative occult. Um, but I'm not going to lie. They of you as an alt-right astrologer. <laughs> I, I hope they just don't even think about me um, because <laughs> yeah, I, I like it's just um i i having trouble with that that all my peeps from like 2019 which included people like that i'm just like no you 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 failed the assignment you for the past two years um were supporting whatever the current thing is and if everybody's kind of moving in lockstep i'm just like am i on uh, the wrong squad is what i'm constantly thinking you know well you just do what you're doing and the right squad will gravitate towards you and you may even, you know, it could end up being a blessing for some people that are heavily drinking the Pepsi, uh, <laughs> the Democrat Pepsi, you know, Pepsi and Coke, right? Mm -hmm. And Or the Coke, or the Coke. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they... you don't want to drink the Coke either. <laughs> <laughs> Equal poison, different color label. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might end up being a good influence on people like that, that thought that they're going in to hear their own rhetoric repeated and got a different perspective and maybe thought about it because that's part of the problem is the social media is so controlled. Obviously people are just hearing the same story over and over again and uh, alternative ideas are suppressed. So I totally get it. <laughs> yeah. Kaylee in the chat says, I appreciate that Pluto pilled so many people. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Pluto pilled. Um, yeah, I, I, those, those, that's with Cam White and SJ Anderson. And like those, those two guys are, um, they're, they're, they're not only like more pro astrologers, like they're more full time, they're more, I'm kind of a reluctant astrologer at the end of the day. But, uh, um, yeah, I know. Yeah, last time I talked to you, you're like, I'm not even, I'm not even sure I believe this, but this is what I do. <laughs> I'm, I'll be totally transparent. I'm right there right now again, but in a totally not before it was just like, a little bit paranoid a little bit like oh my god what have i done like what is what is this like how what if i have to give this up what if what if and now i'm just like um it is what it is i don't i'm not there's no like paranoia or fear but i at this moment don't know if i'm gonna keep doing it you know so oh, well you got people even, in the chat saying it's great i actually didn't realize that that was the name of another show i thought she was <laughs> was saying pluto pilled like it's a thing that happened to people <laughs> no that's kind of that's it is, a, but uh, yeah that's a rock sure, and maybe. exclusive on my channel but but yeah it's the the name is we, we go there in the way you think we would based on the title <laughs> I get little Very. clues all the time that astrology is real. I have my personal court astrologer in the chat, Kaylee, here. You should talk to her. You'd love talking to her. Mm -hmm. Bring her on Cosmic Keys. But uh, like Taurus, right? Venus just went into, I'm sorry, Venus just went into Cancer. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Venus went into Cancer and the day it happened, a friend gifted me a really nice potted plant arrangement with a cactus in it for my house. I'm just like, that feels like a Venus entering uh, cancer type of thing to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I've, I've lived astrology for uh, a long time and the problem I'm having is like, I am an enjoyer of astrology. Oh, you're, I like your forecasts or I like your, your readings when I do it with you, but um, it's, it's, sometimes I want to take breaks from it or sometimes I really am just not feeling it or don't care about it as much. But I, then there's like the duty that you need to kind of show up and kind of serve this role. Um, and I don't feel this. Uh, it's, it's not like last time when I was questioning it and I was like, Oh my God, I might have to like renounce this. It's so it's way, way more like, 
Um, I'm trying out. I'm, I, I won't, I'm thinking about trying like not acknowledging it, but it's cool. It's fun. It's like synchronicity. It's syn it is synchronistic. It's bringing synchronicity into your life. Um, but uh, to I'm questioning whether I want to do that or I want to. You know, there, there's certain things in the calendar year that I am like, I think it is good to have foresight. Like there's going to be a line and a live, for example. Um, but it's it's a lot of mental gymnastics sometimes to like test it or to um, validate it or to make it real personal with your own birth chart. I'm questioning whether I even want to bother with it and it sucks to have to say that because i it's kind of my brand but it's almost like fuck my brand like I, i'll 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 move my brand moves as i move and yeah, that's how you gotta do it that's just how it is right i, now. I just and, add things on i don't remove things very much <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that's an aries trait maybe i don't know but yeah I, since we talked last have i have you gotten like to hear about the sound healing stuff i do for for clients i think i think i know well i mean i i do know that you do that but for the people who are listening yeah why don't you kind of explain how that works and what your uh services are with that yeah and i know the people that are in the chat right now largely have heard me talk about this ad nauseum <laughs> a couple of them have received it from me so they know about it but this modality i learned about called biofield tuning are you familiar with that I mean, based on you talking about it, yes. But I know about it like because of you, but oh, okay, cool. So it is pretty remarkable. It is like an anatomy of your energy field. And I've had incredible experiences with clients since I started offering it to help them bring their energy back into balance. And it works on this left, right, forward, back axis along with the spinal chakra axis. Mm -hmm. There's so much information that you can derive out of even doing it remotely. It's like one of those things that has such instant results and kind of like mind blowing synchronicity generation that it becomes impossible to question it. <laughs> like yeah. whenever you're able to uh, pull out, literally pull out of the ether, what somebody is going through or what health issue that they're currently having or what their current mindset is or uh, something that happened to them relating like causing a certain feeling at a certain age like there's a guy last week where <laughs> i hit this spot in his field that i was like okay because i know pe i ask people how old they are and i can tell based on where the static is in the field how long ago something happened to them mm -hmm. kind of works like rings of a tree the further out is the older stuff and closer to the body is more recent but i hit the spot in the guy's field i was like okay so uh, around the age of 30, something really major seems to have happened that gave you this impression that you were like stuck or chained to something stressful that you couldn't get away from. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's when I mar got married. <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't married anymore. <laughs> oh, OK. But, uh, but that kind of stuff is just right there in the energy field and it can be found. And then when you bring awareness to it, it improves the the flow and uh it's like almost automatic so i've actually had people before where uh, especially for the upper chakras like the third eye and the crown mm -hmm. where literally just pointing out that something was going on there to imbalance it pointing it out and explaining what that feels like to them brought it back into balance and i didn't even have to hit a fork <laughs> it's like awareness is the main medicine and well the, you, the sound gives the body the ability to have awareness of itself i think i'm i just want to interrupt i'm really curious like um when you're talking about let's say that last example when you were um you said like looking at the field like how how does that work or what what does that look like or what are you doing in that are you, you're like tuning a fork and then seeing stuff vis or how does it work not very frequently do I actually see anything, but that has happened. Uh, for me, <laughs> I get, okay, so I'm I'm striking the fork at the far edge of their field, like six feet away from their body, but we're doing it remotely. So I have a table set up that's got crystals and candles that are creating sort of a, <laughs> an effigy of their body, like 
with representative crystals for each major energy energy center, the legs, the feet, the arms, it's all there. So I'm per, it lets me like play pretend as if their body's actually there. And they mm -hmm. could be in Australia or something. It doesn't matter. And then as I strike the fork at the edge of the field, there'll be a very specific place on the, like around six feet where I can find the perimeter, like the membrane of it. And then I slowly pull the fork across towards the table and I'll get different cues. It comes about in different ways. Like the most reliable way for me now, now that I've had a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah. Jen says in the chat, sometimes the static is audible. Yeah. Sometimes you'll get like the fork will just do a crazy sound that it doesn't normally sound like, or you'll strike it and it'll be like a shriek or it'll sound dull <laughs> or uh, another good clue is if the the tone runs out really fast compared to how hard you hit it, like faster mm -hmm. than it should. That I call that an area that's thirsty, <laughs> but okay. thirsty for the tone. But for me lately, uh, the most reliable thing, I've kind of asked my body to do this so that it's easier because listening really closely, it can be a little bit tough. <laughs> I have, I practice to, I practice attention improving modalities. Sure. But still it's easy to like kind of drift off in your mind for a second and like maybe you feel like oh, i'm not sure if i'm getting this right so for me what has been most reliable is uh i get these sort of like pressure changes in my eardrums oh okay. and even like uh staticky electric clicks and pops in my head or in different parts of my body uh, but the most common will just be like right in my ears. There'll be like this click sound, like actually popping in my ears. And I'll feel kind of like when you're going up and down in the airplane, but less, not, not quite that uncomfortable. Yeah. It doesn't leave like an uncomfortable um, type of feeling the way that the plane ears can. But that is the most reliable thing uh, that's developed as I got back into doing Qigong way more regularly oh, and doing nice. it correctly. And after I started that, the reliability of the uh the eardrums to tell me has been like a hundred percent so i mostly just go with that but sometimes i'll get like i might feel a discomfort in my body <laughs> there's been times where i'm like working in the throat chakra and i'll hit a spot where all of a sudden i get like an acid reflux in my throat mm -hmm. type of feeling or it it can do almost anything but so there's a, <laughs> you just got to pay attention. There's a variety of ways that you might come across noticing where the static is, but the way that you notice also can inform if you sort of interpret it symbolically more information about what it is or like what the feeling was. So <laughs> that's, I think with practice, something that anybody could do, honestly, and people probably have a little bit different language for communicating through the forks between bodies like that but yeah I, I want everybody to try it out that's why i talk about it all the time i want everybody to use coherent sound as a modality it's freaking awesome so wait walk me through it you're you're you have like that like you said like the layout with the certain areas in this of that represent the person's body so do you like strike do you start off by like striking the tuning fork and then like put your hands over those areas or like, I'm just curious, like how, like what, it what it really looks like. Like I actually, I started end. away from the table, like six uh -huh. feet away. And I, I usually try to find the perimeter, especially if I know that that, well, the very, very beginning of the process is I use dowsing rods. Mm -hmm. I have these two L rods and then I walk towards the table and I'm thinking like crown chakra, root chakra, feet, knees, different body parts. And the dowsing rods will open when I hit the perimeter of that field. And so I measure all the different aspects of their energy field that way. And I can tell which ones are longer, which ones are shorter and which ones are about where you'd want them to be. And also the dowsing rods will open only the left will open or only the right will open. And that can give me more of a clue like, okay, this is a left side of the body problem more than a right side of the body problem. Mm -hmm. So that's like a massive shortcut, actually, <laughs> the dowsing rods thing. When I realized I could do that, that's when I actually wanted to start taking on clients because before that, my method was like really exploratory and to actually check every area of every axis of somebody's energy field, left, right, front, back, 
and all mm-hmm. the chakras and knees and feet and ankles and the whole nine. <laughs> that takes, you know, you're looking at like a three hour sound healing session to just sweep through and explore it all. Yeah. So are you doing like this? Target. Are you doing it like live or are you doing it and then reporting back to the client? We'll be on a zoom call, but it works even if we're not on the call, if we just agree to the time to do it, I've done it that way before too. Actually once for Lindsay, who I already brought up, Lindsay Sharman. One time uh, we were like messaging and she was saying she had something going on with uh, her Hashimoto's discomfort and some pain. And I was like, okay, just sit tight. I'm going to fork. I'm going to do some forks on you. And I didn't even set up the table, right? All of that stuff is sort of like all the props are really just there to make the whole thing. The feel. connection. Yeah. Yeah. It, all that prop, <laughs> prop and ceremony, <laughs> pomp and ceremony is kind of like, kind of like a massive boost to setting of the intentions and also to the the client to make them feel like okay this is like a full a full thing and i believe that they're effective i know that crystals have extreme intelligence and resonance to them and fire <laughs> on the candles has a lot of properties that are mystical too but with somebody super magical especially like lindsay <laughs> i just skipped all that stuff and played some tones for the areas affected and she got mm-hmm. some relief so there's a lot of strategies like you can use tuning forks on yourself I remember I had the cooties at the beginning of the year, like pretty, I was, it was bad. <laughs> I was bedridden for a couple of days, but mm-hmm. I pulled myself out of it way faster than most people do because of nutrition and vitamin C and uh, doing a lot of like saunas, infrared saunas. Sa- yeah. Saunas. <laughs> it's the also best. <laughs> though, when it was like unbearable, I would just play my solfeggio forks by each ear. And okay. like just play each fork once, let it ring all the way out, maybe a couple times each fork. And just I couldn't do anything else. I was bedridden. So that that works too. And then there's weighted tuning forks people can get. So you can do this on yourself. But the whole process of like sweeping through from the far end of their field to the core is where you're gonna find where the trauma was at that caused the the issue and the disease or the discomfort or the health problem or the emotional spiral or, or the procrastination. <laughs> That's a big one. Uh, it's amazing because we're talking about energy that is stuck, that should mm-hmm. be circulating with the rest of your biofield. And because of that, uh, most people are operating at less than 100%. And that's obvious, right? Mm-hmm. So what in real life that manifests as things like you're like, you're only completing tasks. of the way Uh, example would be you don't finish your dishes. (laughs) You, you like start to do the dishes and you don't finish, or you start to do your laundry and you get it all the way done and it's folded and it's on the hangers, but you just leave it laying on the bed. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are little things, but bigger things might be like you haven't cleaned out your closet (laughs) for a decade and it's a horrible nightmare or things like that. And, uh, because our, our living space and environment and even things like our career and our connection to other people, even far away people, are all extensions of our biofield and connected and rooted into our biofield, improving the current of our biofield improves the relationship we have with all those things, especially the living space, though, because living space is root chakra. <laughs> That's usually the one that needs the most work, commonly speaking. People tend to be more top heavy and have like sometimes even uh, I had somebody the other day where their their uh, th- third eye chakra was like eight feet <laughs> instead of six feet, way mm-hmm. bigger. And there are instances of people just having a bigger energy field. But in that case, it was like swollen and easy to fix. But person might not even realize that they're just having the experience of like kind of looping on remembering stuff from the past. Like in this example, this person had an issue with, um, well, it was root too. They did, they, they had moved in their life and they really loved where they lived before and felt at home and it like it was their right place. And then the new place there and they didn't like, and they felt like it was wrong and they'd been there for a long time. 
And that was manifesting in a couple places in their field, but specifically <laughs> their third eye was like way overcharged. Yeah. And the, uh, the blob of stuck energy that was like sucking energy to itself was on the side of the third eye, the, the left side, which rules thinking about the past. And so that could have to do with like PTSD, but it could also just be like reminiscing about old times and thinking that they were better than the current times. And there was other places yeah. in the field that <laughs> there's other places in the field that showed up. Like <laughs> there was actually when I was sweeping through this person's field on the, I want to say this happened on the heart chakra, actually on the heart chakra, on the area that has to do with like holding back aggression, anger, or assertiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hit the spot where she had the time, the time depth from when she had moved and I heard in my head, like, as if I heard it in my ears, it wasn't even coming from the fork. I heard like <clears throat> a silent scream is the only way I could describe it. <laughs> like, no, like Darth Vader and the uh, Revenge of the Sith movie where he's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> but nice. a, a lady version. So yeah, there's just like n nothing that can't be improved or helped with that. And I, I've definitely not explained this in a systematic way, though. So if you have more questions about it. About yeah, it. I mean, so, OK, you I'm fa I'm fascinated. So that's why I keep asking questions. It's like you you got the dowsing rods to kind of set up the uh, diagnosis. And then do you and then you've got the crystal layout that represents their body. And so when you're figure, and you, you're like, I'm testing the field. Are you? What does that actually look like? You said you were thinking about like the, the certain area of the body and holding the dowsing rods and then they react or is it? Yeah. Like you just walk towards the, the body with mm -hmm. the dowsing rods and you think root chakra or sacral chakra and they maybe just stare, move, maybe stare at that part. And yeah, they open and close. <laughs> they do. They automatically do dowsing yeah. rods. Dowsing is fascinating. It's an ancient practice and um, nobody knows how it works or why it works. I have, theories about it because the dowsing rods we're talking about they're copper rods that are mm -hmm. just bent at 90 degrees with a long end and a short end for a handle and then there are wooden beads on the handle side that are loose beads so you're holding these wooden beads which means it can easily spin on the beads yeah but you're you're trying to hold it steady you're not trying to open it yourself i mean but, I've, I've seen people using it trying to find water or like trying to find a well that's the old, that's like my main exposure to it, but I've seen how it works, but it's, it's trippy. It is trippy, dude. I, I think that it has to do with like a, a current thing that your body being an electric organism, <laughs> like mm -hmm. all life is, it is connected electrically to the entire environment around it. And that environment around you is connected electrically to the entire cosmos. And then etherically, the ether is beyond the dimensions of place or distance or location or time. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if there's a, if we're talking about ether and we're talking about the medium that everything is expressing through or the pleroma or the all, it would have to be, it would have to be indivisible and beyond time because otherwise it would no longer fit into the category of being the all, the everything everywhere all at once. So your mm -hmm. body is a expression of ether. And it's electrically connected to the entire rest of the universe, which is also an expression of ether. <laughs> so not only is your body, the whole universe, like literally the ether that composes your body and energizes your body, that life force energy is the whole cosmos, but it's connected to the whole cosmos too. So I think with dowsing, we're seeing an example of how I think it's working in terms of the action of opening and closing. I think that's an electricity thing coming from your body, mm -hmm. but your body in my opinion, knows everything that there is to be known. The ether is the Akashic record, right? Uh, it's, it's what you would call spirit. It's what you would call God, in my opinion. It's the all. So as an express, expression of that, the body is that. And so things like the biofield tuning or the biofield anatomy uh, and dowsing rods, these are like languages that give you the opportunity to get information from the all-knowing aspect of yourself. Yeah, I mean, I to I'm totally on board. Like, I have no doubt that um, time and space does not keep us separate. I mean, it, 
other than on a physical se sense, it doesn't keep us separated. And we all, uh, none of the, you know, this is all totally plausible to me. Um, yeah. I like to say that distance is conceptual. Yeah. You know, separation is mental because everything is mental. If you go with the whole hermetic principle of mentalism. Yeah, totally. Well, here we're about to really enter the speakeasy right now. Um, so before um, we totally cross over, do you want to just tell the preview people where they can find you and your work or if they want to book a session with you, how do they do that? Oh, absolutely. Interversepodcast.com is my website. If they want to book a session, they can just email me, chance at interversepodcast.com. Uh, there's a shop tab on the website where you can find sound healing as a, a subcategory. Also, I do Oracle card readings. I say Oracle card just because it's sort of a grab bag, but primarily I'm working with I Ching and Tarot, but I do have some other cool decks that work their way into sessions with people. So uh, I'm happy to offer those services, but you know, if you want a lot of free mind blowing gravy, just check out the podcast. <laughs> There's so much I uh, highly recommend. Like if you are super interested in the universal language and syncretism or synchromysticism, you're going to love a lot of the stuff that is on my channel. I highly recommend the uh, recent show with Dylan Sicosio or all the shows with Dylan Sicosio. Back to the whole audiobook thing. Another audiobook that I have out that people can check out is called Spirit World, July's End with Black Swans. And uh, World is spelled W-H-I-R-L-E-D. I'm working on the next book in that series too. It's a multi-book series. And that's all about showing how the mythologies, languages, religions of the world are all from a common source. And <laughs> what that common source is, is a mystery still. It's like ongoing research, but very, very helpful to be able to dispel the hex of separation because separation and division are the battleships of the, the wannabe controllers powers that were. And whenever you can syncretize the information, and show that, oh, your tradition and this tradition and what I grew up on and how I see the world, we're actually, we're actually all talking about the same thing. It's all the language of Om or the language of On, the language of the sun. Sanskrit was a name for Sanskrit. <laughs> you know, once you get into that, uh, you syncretize and then you sync their battleship, <laughs> the, the battleship of the they, the hierarchy evacuating you. And Did you just uh, say my pronoun. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's. And, and to piggyback off that, you know, even just you talking about that, um, it's that that's like kind of your your brand. Your show really goes very deep and um, very alternative. I have to say, like your a lot of your guests, I could say, see even like the alternative community canceling them. You know, it's like yeah. those type of voices, which I'm all about. It's I love it, it, I love that you kind of go there and um, bring I go where the truth appears to be. And then I'm not afraid to be wrong and admit I'm wrong. So that's what I'm about. I'm not interested in like, I'm really not interested in anything other than figuring it out myself. And so I'm authentically trying to learn what the truth is, wherever it takes me. And then happy to bring the whole point of the podcast is to bring as many people on that journey as want to come with me. Yeah, totally. And I mean, when did you start it? It was what, like 2018 or 17? Oh, no, I've been doing it since December 2015. <laughs> Dang. So yeah, you're- Yeah, you're, but I mean, it was like a really slow start. Right? Seasoned vet. So 